Hello, good afternoon to all our guests in India and good morning to our guests from Germany. My name is Meera Dalvi Sani and I'm the Regional Director of IGCC Pune. I welcome you all to today's webinar where our partners, experts from German Osteoprotection Center Private Limited, will discuss COVID prevention and control for institutional safety, employee protection, and self-care. As the world is slowly beginning to unlock, offices and institutions have opened up. Individuals are stepping out of their homes for work and to attend to their daily chores. Hence, organizations have to now ensure physical safety and well-being of their workforce. The first part of this session has been designed to demonstrate and communicate this by the German osteoprotection team, and they will share insights and tips to protect the health of your employees post COVID. Although German osteo essentially specializes in osteoporotic care, they have diversified to other healthcare fields. They have developed a COVID-19 rapid antigen testing kit, which is an efficient and effective tool for quick detection followed by isolation and treatment. German Osteo will also be highlighting their principal product so as to make us aware of the same. Their commitment and mission is towards achieving a safe and healthy world. From German Osteo Protection Center, we have Dr. Wolfram Otto and Dr. Martin Lindner, both co-founders. We also have Mr. Abhiman Yulonde, Managing Director and CEO, and Dr. Deepthi Nagle, BDS and MDS, and she's in charge of their Pune Center. Dr. Otto specializes in general diving and emergency medicine. He completed his human medicine studies from Wiesen, Heidelberg, London, New Orleans, and D Durban. He then pursued business administration at Cologne and Hagen, and is a health economist. He is a member of the German Society for Digestive and Metabolic Diseases and the German Society for Osteology. Dr. Lindner is a lawyer and specialized in European state aid. He has been instrumental in expanding the diagnosis of osteoporosis to various countries outside Germany. Prior to introducing the same to India, he has taken the concept to four other countries. Dr. Lindner was also active in the German parliament and has visited India several times as a member of parliament and his love for India always grows with every visit. Mr. Londe has over 20 years of experience in healthcare services, private equity funds, real estate investment management, joint venture structuring, business development and team management as well as expertise in successfully raising funds for business expansion. Dr. Dipti Nagle heads the GOC center in Pune, and prior to working with GOC, she worked as a consultant periodontal surgeon with leading hospitals and clinics in Maharashtra. A very warm welcome to all of you today. Moving ahead with the agenda, once our experts have made their address, we will open the floor for your queries. You can already post queries in the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Kindly post clear, uh, clear queries so we can give you the best possible guidance. Lastly, do review your membership status with the chamber and get in touch with us with any queries regarding the same. If you're an active member, it helps us stay well connected with you. Um, can I request everyone to please mute themselves? So if you are an active member with us, it helps us to stay connected with you. Also, do stay tuned in to our website, our social media pages for webinar details and member engagements. Thank you very much for your cooperation. And now, Abhimanyu, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Meera. And thank you, IGC, for giving us this opportunity to uh, participate in the webinar and organizing this webinar. Uh, to start off, uh, before we, I'd like to just talk about German Osteo Care. German Osteo Center Protection Private Limited is an established company owned and managed by Germans in India. We have been doing business for two years in India now, and we're growing further from here. Uh, we are also a member of the Indo German Chamber, and the endeavor of German uh, Osteo Protection Center is to 
do effectively diagnosis of various ailments including osteoporosis in an bid and effort to add to more expertise in diagnosis we have added a new product that goes in sync with the pandemic which is diagnosis of covid-19 using a rapid antigen test kit uh, the aim of german osteocare is just not to leave a person with a test result we would always want to do a hand holding for him from start till end in case a person tests positive on the uh, covid side or a person tests uh, having an acute osteoporosis diagnosis and the, as a part of hand holding process i think we'll talk more in each of the sessions that we are covering right now i will now invite dr deepthi nagle to start talking about uh, covid-19 how the whole thing moves and why is this a pandemic and how one should be looking at protecting himself from the pandemic that we are currently living through dr deepthi Dipti, can you unmute yourself? Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. So let's start with the structure of coronavirus. As we can see, this is the uh, uh, section of coronavirus. These are the spike proteins, which are made up of glycoproteins. As we can see in the structure, these green structures are the membrane proteins, that is the M proteins. These blue structures are the hemagglutinin esterase dimers. These are the E proteins. This is this red layer is the anvela, which is made up of lipid, and this is the RNA protein and N protein. Now, this is the site where the various mutations occurs and so called the different different variants of uh, coronavirus popped up as you have must have, have heard about alpha beta delta extra extra etc mutant variants so this is the uh, site where the mutation occurs and these are the sites where the rapid tests are done that is the rapid antigen test and this is the site the rna protein and the rna section the, these this is the site where the reverse transcription means rt pcr test is done moving on to the detailed structure of the coronavirus coronavirus is basically round in shape that is spherical in shape okay spike proteins as we seen uh, in the last slide okay spike proteins are made up of two proteins s1 and s2 this is the detailed structure of spike protein okay now why these spike proteins are important these are the proteins that helps the coronavirus to enter into the human body that is the receptor cell that is the host receptor now what s1 does s1 recognizes the human body cell which is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 this is the receptor binding domain and what s2 does s2 cleaves the human cell so that coronavirus can enter into the cell so this is the basic uh, functions function of s1 and s2 in next slide let's talk about how coronavirus infect the human body now this is the coronavirus okay this is the spike protein this is the detailed structure of spike protein that is s1 and s2 now this is the receptor cell that is the human body okay where the receptor uh, cell is present that is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 this is the host cell now what is happening the s1 detects the human cell s2 broke the human cell so that this spike protein can enter into the human cell and enter into the human cell and then the cell fusion occurs so this is how the coronavirus detects the human cell through s1 protein and enters into the human cell through s2 protein and get fused within the human cell this is how infection occurs within the human body this is the summary uh, to understand this slide i would like to talk in some common terms that what exactly virus does 
Now, virus are not technically living things, okay? They invade the living cells, they hijack their machinery to get the energy and replicate and find ways to infect other living organisms and start the process over and over again. So basically, the virus enters into the human cell. This is the human cell. This is the virus. It enters into the human cell. It hijacks the machinery. How it hijacks the machinery? Through transcription and translation. Now, what is transcription? It is a process of making an RNA copy, means multiple copies of genome will be prepared within the cell. And what is translation? It is the process of translating the sequence of messenger RNA to a sequence of amino acids. Basically, it is a coding, decoding function where the uh, coronavirus hijacks the machinery of the human body. Then they enter into the human cell, there they get assembled, they enter into the budding stage and this is how the virus infection occur in the human body. Next slide is about the transmission of coronavirus. As we have all known about it, that coronavirus enters into the lungs through nasal root and et cetera, et cetera. But there are other routes also available that is fomites or through fecal oral routes from one human body to another human body. As we can see in the diagram, the coronavirus entering into the nasal root, entering through the trachea, entering into the lungs, infecting the lungs. So how can you differentiate? In this diagram, you can see this is the lung non-infected by coronavirus, and this is the lung infected by the coronavirus, completely damaged, that is fibrosed, okay? After transmission, let's talk about the effects of human body. Now, after coronavirus, various cases were heard that it is not only affecting lungs, but entire body so let's start with the lungs as this is the most commonly infected part the virus enters into the lungs causes swelling in the lungs the lungs fill, become filled with fluid causing pneumonia and patients uh, start gasping for air which could be fatal next is brain people with covid uh, 19 uh, virus had strokes and seizures and especially affecting the central nervous system causing uh, losing their sense of smell next is heart uh, coronavirus causes swelling in the muscles of heart, causing heart attacks. In kidneys, causing severe uh, uh, kidney disease, leading to patients to dialysis. Around 20% patients also reported about the intestinal problems, reporting severe diarrhea. And the main and the se uh, severe consequence was the blood clotting. Now, blood is uh, uh, flowing in the whole body. So, blood clotting can create... Uh, uh, distractions in any of this organ and clots can break off and damage multiple organs by stopping the blood flow. Next is after transmission and infection and effect of human body, let's talk about the testing and detection of coronavirus. Now how coronavirus is tested? As we know, we have all, we are all are aware about various kind of tests like rapid antigen, rapid antibody, new uh, RT-PCR, Apart from these common tests, there are other tests like isothermal nucleic acid amplification and digital polymerase chain reaction, microarray analysis, next generation sequencing, and etc. Now, how the samples are collected for testing of coronavirus? Either through nasopharyngeal swab or sputum, throat swabs, or deep airway material collected by suction catheter or saliva. Now, uh, as the swab are collected from various parts of the respiratory tract. The sensitivity is different for each and every uh, kind of swab collected. Now for RT-PCR uh, sensitivity for uh, swab collected from nasopharyngeal part, it is 63%. If it is collected from oral swab, it is 32%. From feces, 48%. From sputum, it is 72 to 75%. And when it is when the sample is collected from bronchoalveolar lavage the sensitivity will be 93.95 percent but it is not practically feasible or possible to collect the bronchoalveolar lavage from each and every patient that means the fluid from the lungs in simple terms if we'll talk about so it is uh, we rely on the nasopharyngeal swab or the sputum swab for the sense for the uh, testing and detection of coronavirus Let's take, talk about different types of uh, testing. As I uh, explained in the previous slides that our, uh, antigens are uh, detected at the spike protein level. Okay, So in the case of coronavirus, these are basically the surface spike proteins where we detect the antigen proteins. What is the advantage of rapid antigen test? It is quick, 
to perform and it uh, the antigens can be detected before the onset of covid-19 symptoms but the disadvantage it is not that much sensitive as compared to the rt pcr test second is the rapid antibody test here we uh, detect the presence of antibodies after the coronavirus infection advantage is we can use this test to assess what fraction of population has been infected secondly how much antibodies contained in a covalent plasma for covid-19 treatment and this is most important to verify if a given vaccine generates an adequate immune response so if you are fully vaccinated or partially vaccinated get yourself uh, tested with rapid antibody test to detect whether your body is responding to it or not advantage i'm um, sorry disadvantage it is less sensitive as compared to its confirmatory test that is igm and igg antibody test uh, then third one is the rt pcr test that is a reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction which occurs which we perform at the level of rna that is the nucleus level uh, advantages that it is um, it provides advantages including automation higher output and it is more sensitive disadvantage its cost plus it is time consuming talk about who should get tested it is very important slide please pay attention who should get tested people who have symptoms of covid-19 please get yourself tested people who have tested positive most people who have not uh, who have had close contact with someone with confirmed covid-19 please get yourself tested unvaccinated people who have taken part in various activities social gatherings traveling please get yourself tested people who have asked or referred to get tested by healthcare provider or any other government body get yourself tested fully vaccinated people with no covid-19 symptoms do not need to be tested uh, following an exposure to someone with covid-19 people who have tested positive for covid-19 within the past 3 months and recovered do not need to get tested following an exposure as long as do, they do not develop new symptoms now in last slide i said fully vaccinated people should get tested here i am saying fully vaccinated people with covid-19 sem do not test it i am saying they should not get tested for rapid antigen but they should get tested for rapid antibody test to check their immunity level there is a difference next is how gioc is contributing towards covid-19 testing so this is the product that is which we use for the rapid antigen testing okay testing can be carried out within your premises only it is uh, very uh, quick to perform within uh, 25 minutes we will uh, perform the test and we we can provide the uh, report hand to hand depending upon the uh, report you can we, we will guide you how to proceed further and the main important thing this is that the our product is listed with b farm germany and it has got eu approval this is this slide is showing how we perform the test and i know all of us are aware about it in quickly i'll tell you we collect the sample we pour the buffer solution in the extraction tube we mix the sample with the extraction with the buffer solution and for 8 to 10 times by stirring the sample clockwise anti clockwise we pour the buffer solution on the cassette and wait for 15 minutes and see the result now what results how the results are interpreted if after 15 minutes control zone and test zone the, these both the zones are showing red bands mean the patient is positive if after 15 minutes only control zone is showing red band means patient is negative if there is no band in seen or only test zone is showing red band mean the test is not performed properly it is invalid please retest redo the test okay so in that i could say that goc is providing end to end solution for rapid antigen testing of corona virus okay we do the test uh, with the uh, on the spot we provide the report hand to hand if the patient is positive we will guide the patient to to the relevant doctors to the relevant hospitals if the patient is not satisfied with the rapid test we will pay guide the patient for the reconfirmational testing to the for rt pcr to our uh, authentic labs and if at all after that patient requires some hospitalization all that we will provide that also in uh, guide, under guidance with the, uh, our specialized panel of doctors so with the, this slide i would like to end my portion of presentation thank you so much uh, dr deepthi uh, now i would uh, suggest to invite uh, dr wolfus goto uh, to uh, give us an uh, advices about osteoporosis 
and how in the situation of covid where uh, movement and exercises have reduced for a lot of people in india due to the lockdown restrictions and the fear of interaction with people uh, how we should what could uh, happen and how one should take care of his osteoporosis related issues and how it could help his lifestyle going forward from now while dr otto talks i'll request dr difty to uh, help him with the slides and the slide uh, review system dr otto yeah um can we yeah. do full screen on the slides hello yes yes sir Nifty, can you do the first can you go on the presentation mode presentation mode please yeah, yeah i'm trying i'm not getting that good morning from germany good afternoon to india um, my name is Wolfram Otto. I am an MD, PhD, and founder of the Osteoporosis uh, and Practice Office Network in Europe. I um, highly specialize in osteoporosis treatment and therapy. We have about 250,000 patients in Europe uh, where, we, where we do preventive care, uh, osteoporosis treatment, and diagnostics. Uh, what we see here in Europe right now is that we yes thank you dr Dimpty. um what right now is that after 15 months uh, 18 months of covid uh, the, we see an increase of uh, of habitual uh, uh, this in pain uh, loss of movement gaining of weight reduction of vitamin d levels we, we did the first study of our workforce with our patients to see what's happening you all know this issue. You're sitting at home, you're going from Zoom to Zoom, from one, one webinar to the next one, but you don't eat well, you don't see the sunlight, you don't, you don't do your workout because you don't, just don't have the freedom of movement. There are a couple of studies around that as well um, from public health. It's, it's increasing due to uh, home office spaces. One of the reasons is in the normal office, you talk, you walk, you discuss with your, 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 your co-employees or with your partners. Here, you're sitting in your desk at your desktop and you don't move at all. Um, this, this is a habitual problem we have to cope with because many companies now decided to do a lot of a homework, uh, home office further onwards. Short-term symptoms are, for example, neck pain, um, back pain, uh, just the, the, the shoulders are falling, falling forward. I see it on my own. If you're sitting on the computer, on your mobile all the time, you, you, you change your habits, you change your, your physics, you just gain weight and you don't, just don't feel very well. So this lifestyle has disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is, uh, of course, the, the, the normal obesity. Please, next one, Dr. Deputy. You see this this figure. I think we all know this person. Um, doesn't mean that this has been a sports champion before, but um, the, the 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 person here has a lot of problem problems coming up. Uh, oxygen and the lungs, the skin doesn't get uh, sunshine at all. You don't produce vitamin D. The muscles and the joints are not being used. If you don't use muscles and joints, you don't use your bones, and bones get weaker the less you work with them. Uh, the more you do, the better the, the bone, but the less you walk and work, the, the worse gets your bone. And um, you, see, you see all the cardiolic, cardiology and in uh, pulmonology problems, but one severe long-term problem is the loss of bone mass. Next part, please. Dr. Dipti? Yeah, thank you. Um, you see always there are things around it, fatigue, mood changes, back pains. But every time you don't move and you get to a, to a downward spiral, your bone is not being moved at all. 
and as I said before, the less you move, the worse for the bone. Um, uh, underlying diseases will get worse and will also weaken the bone. Next, please. Stress is coming on. Stress is uh, you, you, you don't relax at all anymore, you don't move enough. Stress means it's a disbalance in, uh, in, in muscles and uh, in, in your muscle tonus. This can even lead to spontaneous stress fractures. Next, please. What is an osteoporosis? What is this leading to? You see the two pictures. One is like you should build a building. It's a very dense structure of bone minerals uh, working as a bone. Osteoporosis leads to a loss of bone mass, leads to a very wide bone structure, uh, like you're building a, a building which has holes in the wall all over. It's getting weaker and weaker. So microarchitecture deteriorates, the bone mass is loosening, your, your, your in, entire posure how you how you manage your habit is going forward as you can see so what we see is you you losing height you 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 getting smaller when you see elderly people when they are very small maybe even your parents they sometimes lose 10 centimeters of height due to osteoporosis they're getting smaller next please on back um, the gold standard in diagnosis is we have to find out how dense is your bone. The gold standard is a DEXA, that's an adjusted x-ray measurement to, to measure the bone density. You see on the right, this is, this is a small version of an x-ray. You need only a tenth of the, of the doses of radiology and it's specialized on measuring in the spine and in both hips where, how much bone mass is left. Second one you do is a blood investigation, so you have to draw the blood because the bone is not like a steel steel piece. It's the bone has one part which is growing uh, the bone, and the other one is uh, building it down. That's you need this in order to to heal fractures. If you have a fracture, the bone has to build up again, and uh, so the bone is a living thing. It's not not like steel. It's it's living. And in order to, is the DEXA, the, the X-ray shows where are you right now. The so blood investigation shows us um, is your bone working properly? Is it building up again, or did you lose due to the inactivity vitamin D deficit? Did you lose? Did you lose uh, balance? Next picture, please. There are a couple of of different types of osteoporosis. I don't want to bother you with that too much. One which is basically, unfortunately for the women, a hormone hormonic, so it's postmenopausal, or it's due to a disbalance of a, a, a female um, female uh, hormones, or it can be due to um, to different underlying diseases, which will really enhance the osteoporosis quite quickly. One of these underlying conditions is movement. Uh, lack of movement, obesity, smoking, or the like. Next, please. Um, you see the risk factors and what's, what are the symptoms. Unfortunately, in osteoporosis, this, when the symptoms are there, you're already above the edge. So if you have the sudden back pain, joint pain, bone pain, you lose height, or you, you just have a very small minor injury and you break your bone, you are not the osteoporosis, which is a huge difference to to other diseases where you have prodomy, where you have signs which are coming. All these these symptoms show that you already have osteoporosis. So what you need to do is you have to start early in finding patients who will develop an osteoporosis. And that's the reason why I'm very grateful to talk to you about that. We have to find people above 50, not above 75. We have to see, do they have a lack of exercise, as seen before, physical activity. One huge risk factor. Is their diet okay? Do they have underlying diseases? What's the way? Did they have a fracture? Did uh, father, mother, uh, the aunt, did they have a, a fracture? 
mostly you don't know it, that it has been osteoporosis. But 80% of all fractures, 80% are, are due to osteoporosis over 60 years. So all hip replacements, uh, vertebral uh, fractures are all about osteoporosis. So our mission is to find people before they get the symptoms up there. That you can only find if you do the gold standard in diagnosis, uh, the DEXA and, the, uh, and the, the hormone detection, where is the bone turn? Next, please. I don't want to bother you with all these underlying diseases. I just want to show you all diabetes patients will get an osteoporosis. Asthma with corticoids, and kidney diseases, all these models, alcohol, um, uh, these are all um, underlying diseases which will cause in the long term to have an osteoporosis. So if you have a patient, somebody with a diabetes or asthma or rheumatoid diseases, you have to co find the comorbidity osteoporosis in order to prevent them not only having the diabetes but breaking their bone when they are 70. And that's one mission we have to do because the Indian numbers are going up massively. Next, please. You see, right now, the estimation is that 31.5 million people in India have a manifest osteoporosis. This will triple until 2050. Osteoporosis is a disease which is long smoldering. So when you start visiting with 50, you can check the risk if you get it with 70. It's very important to, to stop this massive increase of uh, people with osteoporosis to start early in detection. Um, the results, if you, if you have osteoporosis, are severe. If you have a hip fracture, mostly you will end up in a nursing home or you, you, your mobility in life will go down dramatically. The quality of life for the patients is going down dramatically. So this is the treatment approach. Right now is in India, um, mostly doing just a conventional x-ray, which gives you a lot of uh, exposure and is not specialized onto standard deviations of the bone mass. So it's basically not okay to do an x-ray. You have to do a DEXA. The machine is okay, expensive, but it's um, it's not over expensive, but it's highly specialized on just checking the bone. Um, and then you do there's their portable devices, uh, mostly ultrasound. They have a range of plus minus 35 percent. That's not precise enough to do a to do a therapy. You can use it as a screening method to see how oh, these people might need uh, might need to have a, a full blown DEXA scan. But it's 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 um, it's it's uh, not not precise enough to go for um, for therapy. Uh, medication right now in India mostly is uh, vitamin and calcium, which is okay for the base, but there are a lot of things which you can do to increase the bone mass again to prevent the fractures. Next, please. What we do is we do the same approach as in Europe, and thanks to Abhimanyu and Dr. Depti, who are the team in India to, to get this on the road. Uh, we, we do the patient history. Do your parents have it? What other morbidities do you have? We do the DEXA and we do the blood test. Out of this, and we don't want to stop there. We want to keep the patient for years to come. It's, it's mandatory to, to have the patient and um, work with him or her for years and years in order to manage the disease. We can prevent 90%, 90% of all osteoporosis indicated bone fractures if you do it early. And you have to start with the later stage of your work life and lead the patient to until they're 80 or 90 years old, hopefully then you can prevent the fracture. So what we do is detailed patient history. We scan and do it every three years, do the blood and, and see where the bone turnover is. And um, if you have a severe osteoporosis, you have to come in every six months and you get your medication from us to the therapy. If you are, have an osteopenia, which is a mild version of the osteoporosis, you will have to come every one or two years. Uh, in any case, you have to do the, the bone scan every three years in order to manage the population. So it's a many patient 
um, approach, not we just find out the one who lost 10 centimeters in height. These are already very severe osteoporosis patients who have a lot of pressure and a, and a very bad uh, outcome of their of the bone uh, bone health. Next, please. The patient history, as I showed you, will show all uh, the comorbidities. We need this to calculate the fracture risk. So if you don't have any comorbidities, your fracture risk is severely lower as you have if you had had a chemotherapy or a diabetes. So this is very important. Also now coming up in Europe is the hereditary component. We see a huge, huge um, correlation between uh, fractures in, uh, in parents or aunts or cousins to your own risk outcome in osteoporosis. Next, please. The DEXA system, as I did, will explain to you quite simple. It's highly specialized just on the bone densimetry. You cannot use it for something else, but you get a very, very exact result. Next, please. I don't want to, uh, this is doctor's development, sorry about that. This is just to give an overview of what we do. We do the bone turnover markers, we watch uh, for, for vitamin D, for lytic acids, for the, for the kidney and for the thyroid. Next please. And we also watch, of course, for phosphates, uh, what's, what's, your, you know, uh, what's your calcium level, what is your protein in the kidney, where are you? We need to get this in order to have an artificial intelligence approach of your risk management. Next, please. Thank you very much. Uh, our approach is to wrap it up. Find the people who will develop an osteoporosis. Find as many as possible, because each one of these will be longer in the workforce, will have less problems later on, and will be a healthy elderly patient in 20 or 30 years. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wolfus Soto and Dr. Dipti. Uh, Mira, I now hand it over to you for the question answer. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, I'll just the one question that we have from the audience. Just a moment. Is uh, is the testing same for new variants like Delta or other variants? Dr. Deepthi, you you want to take that? You go ahead, sir. Okay, so testing is the same whether it's for for the new variant or the old variant. It depends on the kit or the RT-PCR uh, testing where the test is carried out. As we have said in the presentation, the test uh, need to be carried out at the right location. The mutants happen at the spike level, and if the testing is carried out uh, uh, at that stage, most of the time a new variant will go undetected. So the tests need to be carried out at the nucleus level rather than at the spike. Level. Oh, thank you. Uh, the next is: Can it be used by anyone at home by themselves, or it needs to be done by your executive? Home? Uh, it's a it's a very simple process. It can be done by a person sitting at his home as well. Uh, it does not require any kind of uh, professional uh, kind of support from our person. Uh, if required, our person can do an online uh, session with uh, the person who wants to use the test. That should not be a problem. Okay. Uh, how frequently should I have a bone density test, Doctor Otto? Could you repeat the question, please? How frequently should I have a bone density test? Uh, it's, it depends on the status of your osteoporosis. If you have nothing but your risk patient, every five years. If you have a osteopenia, a mild one version, every three years. And if you have a very severe osteoporosis with uh, monoclonal antibodies as treatment, every year. Average is about three years. Or uh, is hormone replacement therapy safe for preventing osteoporosis? 
this is a very difficult question and a very ethical question. Um, the, the hormone replacement therapy has a higher risk for, for, for cervical cancer. So that's the reason why it's not being done on a regular base anymore. For osteoporosis, it would be the best you could do. Um, because then you can, you can really get rid of postmenopausal osteoporosis uh, therapy. Right now, in Europe at least, uh, the balance is towards get the medications for osteoporosis and don't use uh, hormone replacement therapy only in dire cases. And how much exercise do I need to boost bone strength? And which exercises would you recommend? Um, it's it's everything which is using muscle strength is good. So it's the, the walking and running is, is good for your cardiac system, but not as good for the osteoporosis. Here it's better to to do exercises which which build up muscle strength because muscle is pulling the bone. So everything is like knee bends and this is 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 triggering growth bone growth. If you do a regular exercise every day, a couple of minutes, it's probably enough to really prevent a lot of osteoporosis. You can do a lot if you do, and you have the discipline to do the sports. And if you take vitamin B and supplement it to a good level, I think then you 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 can avoid a lot of. Okay. Uh, that's about it. With this, we'll wrap up our Q&A round. Uh, Mira, uh, Mira. Mira, I'd like to just add one thing. Our rapid kit that is there is, uh, right. uh, is, is qualified to detect any of the mutant variants as of now. It's qualified. Could you just repeat that, please? The Any of the new mutant variant that keeps coming in, uh, the rapid kit that mm -hmm. we are using, that is good enough to be catching or testing positive if the person is infected by any of the mutant variant. The rapid kit that oh. we have we have been propagating in the box. Okay, I'm sorry, we do have a few more questions. Uh, I think we yeah. can take that up quickly. Uh, just yeah, a sure. moment. Yeah. Can DEXA scan be done in India and how costly it is? Again, the uh, question. Huh? Can DEXA scan be done in India and how costly is it? Maybe Abhimanyu, it's better for you. Yes, uh, yes, DEXA scan can be and is being done in India. The prices for DEXA scan range anywhere from uh, uh, 1500 rupees all the way up to 6800 rupees, depending upon where you're getting it done. At GOC, uh, we have a DEXA scan set up at Pune. We can get it done there. We charge 4000 rupees. Uh, it depends on how many parts of your body you're getting your DEXA scan done, and uh, that's where the costing changes. So it's basically the femur, the spine, uh, and the wrist. Uh, we, uh, the three locations, if all the three are done, the prices range anywhere from 3,800 to 6,500, depending upon the machine, the location, and the uh, company which is doing it. Some uh, centers only do either the wrist or the spine or the femur. And they charge like that, anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand five hundred for one just one one part of the body. Okay, uh, is it advisable for all women above fifty to start with calcium supplements? If so, which one with calcium citrate or calcium carbonate? No, normally the normal food is enough. Uh, with calcium and uh, there's enough uh, supplements in it if you eat normally if you are if you if you have a male nutrition you can substitute this um, so you can do this and start with it but you don't need to buy a product normally but if you if you are male nutrition so you have to buy it later on double food is enough. okay and any suggestion whether it should be calcium citrate or calcium carbonate I guess this I couldn't hear you right uh, which one should it be calcium citrate or calcium carbonate which one would be better we use a calcium carbonate 1000 milligram uh, every second day uh, if you if you have a severe deficit but is this in, is this only in one out of a thousand cases we need to have the calcium all right uh, do you have online counseling sessions for osteoporosis yes we organize that with dr Dikti. that should not be a problem we, we started this in Germany 
me and it's a huge success because many patients are um, not as mobile anymore so we, we require telemedicine and um, this works very very well actually oh so in that case so uh, i'll request anybody who would like to have an online counseling session do write to us and we'll connect you directly with uh, the speakers present today and the doctor <laughs> thank you okay the other Very one is what are the initial symptoms for osteoporosis one should watch out for that's one of the biggest problems you don't have initial symptoms if you have initial symptoms you already have a fracture or you have a lot of pain or you're beginning with a fracture that's the reason why you have to be invasive you have to see the bone into the tree and you have to see the bone turnover and you then you calculate the risk for the next 10 years to get an, a, a fracture or worse. so it's it's really an it's it, it, you have to have a predictive modeling because the, if you feel something it's too late oh okay thank you or uh, the next question is these days companies are opting for weekly or fortnightly uh, rapid antigen tests for its employees to ensure that any infected person can be detected asap however employees sometimes feel worried for repeated tests are there any side effects of doing such testings every week no there is no side effect just that you keep having that discomfort of something being poked in your nose other than that there are no other side effects okay uh, okay so it, there, we have another question but i think here we'll connect you uh, mr gupta will connect you directly to the company the question is is it possible to share the price of your rapid antigen test kit how can we procure your testing kits are they available online or in open market uh they you can write to us we can give the coordinates and we can supply them to you at where whichever location you want uh, we don't have a website to be procured online directly you can write to us and we'll supply them to you, uh, you uh, our coordinates mira you can share with this uh, with whoever this is sana here this is sana here sana, sana, yeah. sana our coordinates you yeah. can share with them yeah sure, sure. Prefer uh, preferably dr dipti's coordinates okay uh does corona vaccines have any effect on osteoporosis not known yet so i don't yeah. think so uh, after 50 how far the food will bring natural calciums or vitamins or should we always go for medicines or combination of both um it's you know we start always quite a bit, which is sunlight, not nutrition. So if you have sunlight, uh, an influence of sunlight will produce your own vitamin E. If you uh, if you are short of vitamin E, you need to have a synthetic. I don't know any nutrition right now which will uh, give you uh, enough vitamin to get your level in high enough. Later onwards, if you are in therapy. You need to you need to take bisphosphonates or monoclonal antibodies if it's a severe osteoporosis. So in nutrition, you can you can cover calcium, you can cover B12, you can cover folic acid, but uh, you cannot cover enough vitamin D, which you need, and you cannot uh, have uh, bone growth out of nutrition. That's the only. Thing. Okay. Okay. Somebody from the audience has also mentioned that I know about this kit, and our German office uses this. <laughs> So we are glad to know that. Uh, okay, so with this, we will wrap up our Q&A round. And uh, thank you so much for all your valuable feedback and uh, responses and the information. Uh, may I please request Honey now to proceed with the vote of thanks? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sana. Hello and a very good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce, we would like to thank our knowledge partner, the German Osteocare, for putting forth such a beneficial session on COVID prevention and control for institutional safety and employee protection and self-care. We thank our panelists, Mr. Abhimanyu Lonely, 
Dr. Dipti Nagle and Dr. Wolfram Otto for throwing light on the peculiarities of the virus and its prevention, and also bringing out the importance and usage of the rapid antigen test kit, as well as sharing knowledge on osteoporosis and its treatment. I am sure many of our guests and their associated companies will definitely avail the benefits from this session and take adequate safety and preventive measures against COVID-19 for themselves and their employees. So once again, thank you very much for coming on board. We would also like to convey a big thank you to our esteemed guests who have always provided us with their unflinching support by attending all our webinars. Thank you very much for being part of today's session. Moving further, I would like to compliment our events team, Sana, Nikhil, and Samira, for having organized this extremely useful webinar. Lastly, a very special thanks to our regional director from Pune, Ms. Meera Darvi Sahani, for having graciously accepted to give the opening address for today's session. Dear audience, please do note a recorded link along with the presentation will be shared with you all in two to three working days. Also, if you know more about upcoming webinars, please do visit our website and we look forward to your presence and participation with the same zeal as always. So thank you until next time. Stay safe and stay well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, we'd also like to thank Dr. Lidner for your presence. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Dr. Lidner. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. In a couple of weeks, we're going to, to see you in, in, in Bombay, right? Bye-bye. Pleasure.